Today we shall reflect on the life of Saint Alphonsus the Liguri. As a boy, Saint Alphonsus, the eldest of seven children, made a retreat each year in company with his father in some religious house. Being extraordinarily gifted and brilliant, he was awarded a doctorate in law at the age of 16 and rapidly achieved success. But he gave up his profession at the age of 27, seeking to discover God's will in prayer and works of charity. Joining the Neapolitan propaganda, he aided these priests who were giving vivid and inspiring missions among the poorest of the poor and was himself ordained priest in 1726. Ardent and of delicate sensibility, profoundly intelligent and downright practical, he always sought to do the will of God. Thus, on the 9th of November 1732, he founded the congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, the Redemptress, and for 20 years traveled about the province of Naples, gaining numerous conversions through his mission apostolate. After the year 1752, he devoted himself steadily to writing. His great work on moral theology holds to the golden mean between the excessively lenient and the exaggeratedly rigorous schools of thought. This prince of moral theologians had a remarkable devotion to Our Lady and the Blessed Sacrament, and this spurred him to compose the many dogmatic and ascetical works for which he is famed. Of these, the glories of Mary, the way of salvation, and the true spouse of Christ are perhaps the best known, each abounding in practical and common sense suggestions. Alphonsus particularly favored short, effective petitions and acts of love. We have altogether 111 books and treatises from his pen which have seen over 4,000 editions in over 60 languages. Thus, ever conscious that whereas on the one hand, piety without knowledge makes one useless, and on the other, knowledge without piety renders one arrogant, Alphonsus proved by example that sanctity and learning do in fact go together. When he was made Bishop of St. Agatha de Goti, a small Neapolitan diocese in the year 1762, he reformed his entire diocese, laboring zealously for 13 years. A tactful reform that covered the seminary, the clergy, the monasteries, besides promoting missions, eliminating liturgical aberrations, instructing his flock, healing the sick and succoring the poor. Weakened by severe austerities and the unbelievable scope and intensity of his pastoral work, Alphonsus was victim to a severe attack of gout and rheumatic fever, which left him partially paralyzed to the day of his death. Not until 1755, however, did the Pope acquiesce to his request to be relieved of his episcopal duties. He was then 79 and during the remaining 12 years of his life, he gradually became deaf, partially blind, and had to be fed through a tube. Worse still, in the year 1780, he was tricked into signing a submission for royal approval of his congregation, a submission that greatly altered the original rule approved by Pope Benedict XIV in the year 1749. As a result, he was stripped of all authority over the Redemptress, virtually splitting the congregation, plunging himself into deep anguish. It was not until after his death that the issue was resolved. Unity was restored and the order expanded worldwide. Alphonsus died on the 18th of July, 1787. He was beatified by Pope Pius VII on 15th of September, 1816 and was canonized by Pope Gregory XVI on the 26th of May, 1839.
He was declared doctor of the church by Pope Pius the 9 on the 23rd of March 1871. The first and only professional moral theologian to have been canonized, St Alphonsus is the patron of teachers of moral theology and of confessors.